So Columbus didn't ever find a new route to Asia, even though he believed he was in Asia. But word of his discovery spread, and soon all the major countries of Europe were sending explorers to the New World. They came for three major reasons, God, gold, and glory. And also, they came for a new all-water route to Asia. But they soon found out, after a couple hundred years of exploring, that there really was no water route to Asia that way, unless they went around South America. So, um, the contact with Europeans, the conquest of the Americas, began with Columbus, and it continued through um, each nation in England or um, each nation in Europe taking a slice of the new land. All right, so let's look at some Spanish explorers. The Spanish explorers used the island of Cuba as their starting point. From there, the conquistadors, which is a Spanish conqueror, explored and claimed land in southern and southwestern United States or North America, Mexico, Central, and South America. A conquistador is a Spanish explorer and conqueror who came to the New World for gold and glory. They didn't really care about converting people, the natives, to Christianity. They just wanted the gold, and they wanted the renown, the recognition, the glory of being a conqueror. In 1513, Balboa, he found a peaceful sea, and another name for the peaceful sea is the Pacific Ocean. In 1519, Hernando de Cortez, he uh, conquered the Aztec Empire. And then in 1532, Juan Pizarro conquered a very civilized and very wealthy Indian tribe known as the Inca, thereby giving Spain lots of gold and silver and the land known as Peru. So take a look. They started from Cuba and then went off into this new land to conquer, destroy and uh, take resources. Also, Hernando de Soto explored the Mississippi River. He was looking for an all-water route to Asia. Instead, he found the Mississippi and found that it was extremely long, a very huge river. Uh, Fran Francisco de Coronado, he explored Texas and Arizona and New Mexico, looking for the seven cities of gold. And that was uh, always one of the great hopes was that these uh, explorers would find cities made of gold, the fountain of youth, all of those um, old stories that you heard growing up. People actually were out looking for them. And instead, he found the Grand Canyon, the, Grandian, uh, the Canyon Grande. Now, all of the land from Florida to California, including Mexico, Central America, and most of South America, would become, would become known as New Spain. And that was a huge empire that Spain controlled, lots and lots of land, millions and millions of people, and billions of dollars worth of resources. And um, what really was important to, bigger than all the wealth, was this transmission of goods and ideas from the old world or Europe to the new world the North and South America. So after Columbus discovered the New World, Europeans began exploring and creating colonies in the Americas. This will lead to contact between Europeans and Native Americans. This contact caused North Americans and Europeans to learn about new animals, plants, and products from each other. Europeans will take, back, will take these back to Europe and they will spread to other parts of the world. Things from around the world will begin to arrive in the Americas. Because think about it, on a ship there are all kinds of things other than just people and equipment. There are animals, there are plants, um, even animals and plants that are just stowaways like mice. European mice are different than North American mice or South American mice. And um, pollen that's on people's clothing from Europe are brought over to the Americas and then they are planted and they grow. Um, well, not pollen, but the seeds. So uh, goods are brought across the ocean both ways, on purpose and also by accident. And that, all, that whole system is called the Columbian Exchange, the exchanging of goods from the New World to the Old World, from the Old World to the New World. Here's another image. Notice um, coming from Europe to North America are, is this awful skull and crossbones which signifies diseases such as smallpox, influenza, typhus, measles, malaria, diphtheria, and whooping cough.
Another picture of the um, Columbian Exchange. Now this one also has voyages of exploration on it. So be able to recognize all of these uh, different, all of these different uh, maps. All right, here's a little quick look at Cortez conquering the Aztecs. Meeting the Spanish would forever change the Aztec way of life. In fact, it basically ended it. Stories and gold would cause the explorer Cortez and his small army to conquer and enslave the Aztecs. And if you're in my writing and media class, you watched a video about this. It was really awful. Um, tens of thousands of Aztec were slaughtered and used for in all awful different ways. They were used as slaves. They were hacked into pieces. They were basically just wiped out by the Spanish. And that made the empire of Spain grow. And um, it's just a, it's amazing how much land and how many resource how much resources Spain controlled for the time that they had all of this land. And notice there's this orange section, which is the viceroy vice royalty of New Spain. The controller, the viceroy, actually was a person who, who acted like the king. Because think about it. North and South America are a six-month journey away from Spain, so the the uh, colonists had to be able to make decisions quickly, and there was a person who was placed as the viceroy of that area, and then the area was so large they split it in half. So there was the viceroyalty of Peru and the viceroyalty of New Spain. Both were controlled by Spain, and both were run by the viceroy or the the second in command below the king. Their word was just as good as the king in, the, in these colonies. Uh, the Spanish conquered the Aztecs and the Incas because of the land and the gold that they had. And all of that gold was shipped back to Spain on treasure ships. So there were lots and lots of ships filled with gold and silver that went back to Spain. And Spain was an extremely wealthy country because of the, uh, the gold that was found in North and South America. Also, France got in on the action. Um, the king of France wanted, to sh wanted a share of the land and gold that the Spanish were bringing back to Europe. He sent explorers to lands north of New Spain. And the explorations of Cartier, Champlain, Marquis and Joliet, and La Salle gave France the right to claim land in Canada and around the Mississippi River, and they called it New France. Very creative, I know. Uh, so Samuel de Champlain made settlements along the St. Lawrence River at Quebec in Mount Royal and named a lake, named it Cham Lake Champlain. You should know all of these places because it's just north of us a couple hundred miles. And Jacques Cartier explored the mouth of, Saint of the St. Lawrence River. Marquis and Joliet, Marquette and Joliet explored the Mississippi River down toward the Gulf of Mexico. So you can see that New France uh, borders New Spain. And there would eventually be trouble, of course, as there always is along borders. The Dutch was another nation that sent explorers. Henry Hudson was a sailor, and you should recognize that name. Uh, he sailed first for the Dutch. His explorations allowed the Dutch to claim a strip of land along a river he named after himself, the Hudson River. That's about 40 miles east of us, um, with the main settlement known as New Amsterdam. So New Amsterdam is present-day New York City. The entire colony was called the New Netherlands. And um, up a, a, along the river, he started a little, col a little town called um, Fort Orange. And Fort Orange is what we today call Albany. And then there were some English explorers. John Cabot explored the east coast of Newfoundland, and this allowed England to claim the eastern coast of North America. And later, Hudson sailed for the English. He explored way, way north up around the Hudson Bay in Canada. So the um, English claim, claimed all this land way up here, and it's very desolate. There's not a lot going on up there. Lots of just flat earth, and it's so cold. And the English eventually created 13 colonies along the east coast of North America. And those 13 colonies will eventually become the first 13 states of the United States.
So before Columbus, the land that would be known as America was populated by groups of Native Americans or Indians. They had no way of knowing how to contact how contact with the Europeans would forever alter or change their way of life. In fact, it destroyed most of their ways of life and their culture. With each new explorer came a new land claim. The Europeans viewed America as a blank or empty land just waiting for them to claim and settle it. And we know that that's not true, that the land was not empty. It was quite full of people already here. But the Europeans, with their greater technology, with their greater, um, just more power, more people, and diseases especially, they came and they, they wiped out everything that was here, or all the natives that were here, and claimed it as their own. So the Spanish found their gold, and they conquered the Indians. The French found a land that was rich in fur and soon sought to the help of the Indians in creating a profitable fur trade. The Dutch developed the land along the Hudson River, but it was the English who would make the biggest impact on America. England would send thousands of English men and women to a new world that was rich in natural resources and land. To the English people who came to live in the 13 colonies, America would be their home. And that's a huge difference than the French and the Spanish. They sent people to conquer and control the land. Well, the English sent people to actually live on the land. So in a short couple of hundred years, there would be thousands and thousands and thousands of English people living here. And compared to the French and the Spanish, who sent relatively few actual colonists.